Paddle, 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 paddle all the way. Welcome back to 340 Paddler, and today I want to talk about hyponutremia. Now, this is a really big word for something very, very simple. Basically, a lack of salt. Now, I want to read from the Mayo Clinic's website. Hyponutremia is a condition that occurs when the level of sodium in your blood is abnormally low. Sodium is an electrolyte and helps regulate the amount of water that's in and around the cell. In hyponutremia, one or more factors will cause this imbalance, including drinking too much pure water, which is something we tend to see during endurance sports events. This can cause the sodium in your body to become dilute, and when this happens, your body's water level raises and the cells begin to swell and this starts to kick off a lot of problems. Now, we see this amongst runners, football players, etc., but we also see it a lot amongst the paddling community because many of us will travel from, for example, cool conditions to really hot conditions to race. We also don't get the same concept of sweating that you would otherwise. The reason is you're in a boat, you're covered with a PFD, it doesn't feel like you're sweating. You're surrounded by water, etc. You have water coming off the paddles. Yet, in 2012, someone did die of hyponutremia in the Texas water safari, and hyponutremia has probably raised its ugly head elsewhere as well, just not with fatal consequences. So, what are you looking for? Unfortunately, many of the symptoms of hyponutremia will mimic dehydration. For example, headache, nausea, vomiting, cramps, lethargy, restlessness, etc. Uh, if it gets very severe, you have seizures, hallucinations, etc. Now, the problem is, ultimately, you have to know what your paddler's doing or what your partner's doing if you're a tandem team, etc. Have they been drinking a lot? If they have, then maybe giving them more water is not what they need. So here we see some really basic symptoms and the level at which things get serious. So dizziness, lightheadedness, fatigue, bloating, puffiness, mild nausea. You can probably start to deal with that with salty foods, etc. Once you get into some of these uh, much more difficult situations, they need to go to the hospital. Unfortunately, it's a very difficult thing to treat. What are you going to see as ground crew or as a partner paddling with someone? Well, you're going to see someone who can't orient themselves. And there are pictures floating around, I couldn't find any right now, of paddlers who are leaning way, way back, like they should not be capable of standing. That is a sign of hyponutremia. They've lost that idea of orientation and balance. They think they're sitting upright, but they're actually back at a 45 degree angle. You will also see an incredible change in attitude, a really negative attitude. Now, a lot of times you look at that and you say, well, it's been a long race. It's a hot day. They're miserable, but it could be electrolytes. So you have to kind of look at everything around you. Are they drinking what they're supposed to be? If they're not, well, maybe it's dehydration. If they are and actually drinking more, then it might be more hyponutremia. So let's look at some solutions. What can we do to head this off at the pass? The most obvious one would be some kind of electrolyte pills. I use Hammer, but you can get these pretty much at any health food or endurance athletics store. It doesn't have to be hammer, it could be any number of other electrolyte pills. Basically, they're salt, they're potassium, they're calcium, and you take them as often as once an hour, and it will keep things replenished so that you don't run into the problem. You could also go simple. Things like pickles or chips, which are salty, and have the necessary electrolytes. Of course, remember, Pickles and lemons you can use to create electricity uh, or potatoes, etc. Because of the electrolytes that they create, you probably did that in grade school. Same holds true here. The salt and the electrolytes in the food will be positive. I mean, you could use Brondo the, if you're back in the idiocracy days, but that's you could use any of these products, Gatorade, Powerade, Brondo, etc., and it would have the same basic function. 
The thing is, it's going to take a while. Dehydration can be fixed in as little as 20 to 40 minutes. You give someone a drink and they start to recover. With something like hyponatremia, it could take up to six to eight hours. And that's a problem. You see, if you go to the hospital for hyponatremia, they will put you on an IV bag and you will sit there for a long time. You don't want to get to this point. And it's also what makes hyponatremia really dangerous because you can't head it off at the pass. There is no quick solution. Everything takes some time because electrolytes take longer to build up than hydration. So if you start to see these symptoms, you're going to want to do something about it. Throw your paddler a bag of chips, have them drink more of their electrolyte drink. Everyone should have some form of electrolyte drink with them. In my case, I usually keep a bottle or a bag with an electrolyte as well as my pure water. Some people will add electrolyte capsules straight to their pure water or something like non-electrolyte capsules. That's fine too. Just make sure you have enough of them or your paddler has enough of them. And if you're ground crew, watch for the symptoms. Don't get overreactive. Don't be oversensitive to every time that the paddler's in a bad mood. That does happen. But remember that it could be something more serious. So if you start seeing some of the other symptoms, not being able to sit upright, nausea, etc., then you would probably want to do something about that. We ultimately just want to get you to the end, preferably in one piece. So this is 340 Paddler, hoping that you keep your paddle in the water.